All right, sound check on our Facebook page. Yeah, all right, all right. All right, again, we do apologize about that. Uh, once again, we are encouraging everyone to participate in the CTF or Capture the Flag. So aside from the price, uh, the experience itself, winners may win up to 250,000 worth of vouchers, including LPI 30% voucher discounts. Comtia Data Plus exam voucher. To Comtia Security Plus exam voucher. And three mile to ultimate self-study combo worth 153,000 pesos. Once you see a flag flash on the screen, it is the indicator that we have, or we provided our CTF challenge in the comment section. And by the way, partner, um, we actually have a winner, or our first winner on our CTF. And I believe na naka join siya dito sa meeting na to. Um, so our game master is gustong interviewin yung yung nakasagot ng capture the flag challenge number three. All right. Go ahead, um, our game master, Mr. Benji Brian Zamora. And so yung nakasagot ay si Florencio Bagayawa. Hi Florencio, can 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 you hear me? Actually, yes, mas maganda sir. kung pa-open ng cam para makita na totoong tao ka. Ayan, <laughs> kamusta Florencio? Ayan. So, okay, Florencio, um, yes, siguro um, before before we, ano, before we, tag ito, before we discuss kung paano mo na-solve yung problem, um, bigay, bigay mo kami back, background ba? Um, sino ka ba at paano mo na-solve yung problem? Uh, ano po kasi, sir, uh, nag, uh, yung pinaka-feel ko po kasi ngayon, nasa web, web development, Kaya yun po, parang naging building blocks na lang so, development. Employee ka? Or employee ka student. ba? Or student? Wow! Wow! Ang galing nga. So, actually, sabi sa akin, third year student ka na. Sige, go ahead. Oh, third year student po ako ng BSCS. Sa Bicol, right? Bicol, oh, sa Bicol Polytechnic. Po. Wow! Oh. Galing, galing. Ah, sige, so if you want, you can share sa audience natin kung paano muna ko yung flag. Okay po. Yung sa... Ay, di po sir, you want to share screen? screen? Want to share screen? Okay lang nga kung gusto yung share screen. So yan, sa so mga naki, na, naroon na nanonood, so yan, so magandang inspiration si Florencio knowing that he's just a third year student. Um, Ang dami na niyang alam, again, Ito magandang, sa mga nandito na mga ayan, mga employers. So I think good addition sa atin si, ano, si Florencio. Say Florencio, go ahead. Use your microphone. Oh, okay. Ito po kasi, uh, na ano ko na walang masyadong content. Ito lang pong itong avatar tapos itong robot. Na ano ko po itong 403 kasi sa pagkakaalala ko ito yung request, yung response na ano, trace pa tayo yung 403. Tapos, Good. merong robot dito. Kaya, nano ko po yung robots.txt na nag-disable sa mga web crawlers para hindi po ma-search ng search engine. So, pag pinagano po natin dito, na robots.txt, merong disallow dito na no one would look here. O, pinag-try ko po siya na, na ito lang, pero hindi siya gumana. Kaya, bumalik po ako dito tapos, pinag-inspect element ko siya. Good. Tapos, meron po ditong comment na, ano, na di ko alam bakit po ito andito, ganun. Kaya parang, nag nagtaka po ako kung bakit andyan yan. Okay. Tapos, uh, ikinapit ko po ito. Tapos, yung no, 
yan. Good. Okay. Tapos, andito na po yung plug. Na, nice. Yung plug XT. Tapos, ito po yung pinaka-plug. Which is, SP plug. Yung, pakain ka na lang rocks. Nice. So, good job. So, yan sa mga nagsusolve ng problem, ng current na, na challenge. So, so yan, discuss na ni Florencia Bagayawa, third year student from Bicol Polytechnic State University, yung ating problem. So, Florencia, congratulations. Um, you will be receiving a Comtia Data Plus voucher worth around mga ganun, $200. Okay, so good job. Good job, Florencia. Thank you, Monsieur. Uh, so, yan. So, thank you, Florencia. Okay, so yan. So, salamat, Florencia. So, sa mga hindi pa nakasolve nung dalawa, so yung dalawa dalawang ano dalawang natitira pang challenges ay yung CTF number 1 at number 2 yung premium nun is yung mile 2 vouchers to so, bigay ako ng hint okay so yung una yung unang hint iba ito yung unang ano um let me share my screen kasi gusto niyo pa talo don't get me wrong pinag um tung tung ano natin straightforward yung ano yung CTF natin hindi ka mo kasa ibang CTF na na parang puzzle na ito more of ano yung nasa real life scenarios. Okay? So, yung first na malalaman nyo, makita nyo, meron dong welcome, we owe this encryption to Rindel. Okay? So, marami sa inyo sumagot kung sino si Rindel. At yung encryption ni Rindel, pagka ginugel nyo, ay nyo lalabas. Okay? So, tama. Marami mong sumagot ng garon. So, tama na kayo. Ang problema, you need to have um, the, the encryption, kung ano man yung encryption ni Rindel, needs to have at least three inputs. So, una yung Encrypted input, yung encrypted na sa yung ciphertext, then you need to have a password and an IV. Okay? So, pag nakita yung tatlo na yun, nasolve nyo na yung problema. Okay ba yan? Okay, so I'm hoping na may makakakuha nun. Okay. Second. Okay. Yun naman sa, ang tawag ito naman sa, tawag ito doon sa, siguro naman na-assume ko, eh na-assume ko na yung iba mga tao rito ay nakapunta na sa Discord channel Okay, na pinup, um, napupuntahan nyo dapat. Tama, no? I'm assuming na meron nang gumawa ng ganun. Okay, kung wala pa, pakita ko sa Discord channel. Marami na nag-ano ng Discord channel namin. Marami na nag-comment kasi lahat sila nahihirapan na. So, gusto ko, again, gusto ko na ma-solve nyo yung problem. So, So, in Discord channel. Okay? So, yan. So, si BB Sam, yan. Nagpadala siya ng isang file na ang pangalan pa yung supersecret.zip. So, yun ba sa inyo nakapag-download na nung, nung file na yun? Ang problema, in, um, tawag ko rito, password protected yung file or encrypted yung file. So, you need to find the password for this file. So, may mga nagpadala sabi na flag, sabi na supersecret yung flag, hindi po. Yung laman nung, laman nung zip file na to nandun yung flag. Parang pinakita kanina ni Florencio. Okay? So, basahin niyo pong maigi yung pong pinag-uusapan ni BB Sam tsaka na itong Russian na kausap niya. Okay? If you know, and if you know how to decipher yung usapan, this is basically, basically an OSINT problem. Ano yung OSINT? Type yung OSINT na word kasi para sa hindi pa nakakaintin din ng OSINT. Open source intelligence, yan. An OSIN problem. So, people often leave uh, breadcrumbs. Parang ano, uh, ano yan, yung uh, Jack and Jill nga ba yan? Sino ba yung ano, uh, Ansel and Gretel. Yan. People will often leave, leave breadcrumbs on who they are. Okay? So, if you know what BB Sam is into, you will know the password of this file. Okay pa? Does that make sense? Okay, so keep on um, ano yung the challenges. Um, keep on working on the challenges. I hope na marami, na na-push pa kayo para makita yung ano. Actually, yung reason ko pinakita yung pinala ng CTF number one. Um, I will, um, actually, the, the, the host will now announce the last two challenges. So the last two challenges begins with the QR code and a um, and the next the challenge begins with a QR code and a um tawag dito, and a Twitter account. Okay? So um this this um these two challenges the last two challenges would give the winners um tawag dito, a Comtia security voucher 
um, Scriptia Security Plus voucher each. Okay, worth $300. Okay, Pak? So, kung wala na po kayong tanong, so kung may tanong po kayo, you can you can add uh, on our chat box. Okay, on our chat box. Siyempre, hindi ko pwede sabihin yung sagot. Pero hopefully, may natut- meron kayong na kuwang hint dito sa ano dito sa aking konting talk sa oras na to. Okay pa? Okay? Okay, so I'll be giving you back the host so we will be announcing the CTF uh, no not the CTF winners the t-shirt winners for our um uh, um Facebook, Twitter, social media post. Okay, so salamat maraming salamat po. All right, thank you so much for that, Mr. Benji Brian Zamora, our CTF Game Master. And congratulations once again sa first CTF winner. So before we move to our next speaker, uh, may we just uh, read some comments from our live? This is from Regine Pahigo Hilado. It goes like this. I'm not an IT student, but I learned something from you, ma'am and sir. It's true that nowadays, hacking and scams are very rampant in social media. That is why we all need to be vigilant so that we will not be a prey to social media attackers. Thank you. Thank you for all the information you guys share. Very helpful. Thank you for uh, thank you so much for that, Ms. Uh, Regine. All right. And dahil um, dyan, bigyan natin siya ng 30% LPI uh, discount or 30% discount LPI voucher exam. At saka ng um, Globe Merchandise. That's very inspiring right now. So right. guys, keep on sharing using our hashtags, our official hashtags to win our prizes. So kindly uh, contact us using our Facebook page to claim your prizes. All right. And moving to our next speaker. He volunteered and was assigned to Philippine Navy Cybersecurity Executive Officer of Naval ICT Station Manila with expertise in digital digital forensic and incident response, cyber defense, and network security. With the topic Building a Security Operations Center, please welcome Lieutenant Junior Grade Janril Saron. Hello, Sir Janril. Kamusta po? Hello. Good morning. Uh, maraming salamat. Uh, Captain, sir. So okay, okay lang po ba yung audio ko, sir? Yes, sir. Malinaw, malinaw po. Yes, sir. Thank you very much. Uh, magandang hapon po sa lahat. And I do thank you for this opportunity and thank you for the management uh, na nag-organize nitong activity. It, actually, it is my first time, although na-introduce na to sa akin yung Hakin Canal lang since 2018. Uh, yun din yung first met namin with the Sites Field uh, around November or December 2018. And meron na akong voucher before <laughs> maka-join but hindi ko nagamit. Uh, same with this, the attendees din natin na uh, uh, napanalunan ko lang din yun sa ano, yung voucher na yun. Sa ticket for akin ka na lang sa mga CTF na ginawa ng site spill. Uh, anyway, so hindi ko na, uh, na-attendan yun. This is my first time to join the Hacking ka na lang. Even last year meron tayong online. Uh, hindi rin ako naka-join due to some other uh, co-important things. So, with that, uh, maraming salamat for the invitation sa amin sa Navy and I do thank also the organization for having me as uh, to represent the organization. And I do thank you also yung sa mga previous speaker uh, who give their uh, expertise talaga in their specific field. That's why I I question myself, bakit ako nandito? They, they, they are experts and their specific field with lots of experience. So without further ado, uh, thank you very much and I will proceed to my uh, presentation. Thank you, Mr. General. Yes, sir. All right, by the way, uh, Sir General, while you're preparing your presentation, before we finally give you the floor, uh, we would like to remind your audience to share a live stream using our official hashtag, hashtag Hacking Canalang 2022, hashtag HKNL 2022, Hashtag Sitesville and this time, hashtag Philippine Navy. All right. And this will be our official hashtags for this topic. Make sure to have it all when you when you share this event. Winners will be announced after Mr. General's presentation. And now we know that you've been waiting for this. So we will now officially give you the floor, Mr. General, whenever you're ready, sir. Thank you, ma'am, sir. 
So okay lang po ba yung presentation ko? Uh, loading lang, sir. Ay, okay na po, sir. Yes, thank you very much. So, again, uh, maraming salamat for this opportunity. I uh, will be discussing right now for the Security Operation Center, mostly uh, building and what are those things na i-consider natin. So, sino po ako? I'm Lieutenant Junior Gay General Bizaron, the Executive Officer of the NICTS Manila or the Naval ICT Center. Then, I've been almost five years, I think, uh, four years plus in the cybersecurity group of Naval ICT Center. Uh, mostly, uh, more on audit yung ginagawa namin, uh, more on network security uh, application, and uh, kung anong related with the cybersecurity para sa maibigay nating protection with our Philippine Navy. So, yun, uh, I do also teaching sa, sa Navy actually for the field of cybersecurity. And I'm also a former project engineer in smart communication. It is a subcontract uh, actually. So, doon ako nag-start. That's what, uh, actually, I mean, nag-start ako sa instructor actually. So, next na trabaho ko is yung... Sa smart, but I, hindi ako nagtagal doon kasi nag-apply na rin ako to Philippine Navy. I'm also a part-time uh, college instructor sa University of Mindanao College of Engineering before um, for preparing yung students natin prior they will uh, take the board exam or bago sila mag-review outside the uh, uh, school. So my habits is just uh, mostly studying Teaching cyber security related topics since it, teaching talaga is my passion talaga uh, to share information, to share my knowledge to the others, especially those who are interested in cyber security. So mostly yung mga sources ko talaga is from open source and uh, publicly available information, publicly available platforms and websites. So dun, dun lang umiikot yung buhay ko. I mean, uh, in terms of cyber security, so dun, dun din ako na, natuto. So disclaimer lamang po, uh, most of the pictures primarily came from an open source lang din. And most of the information that will be shown in my presentation is uh, publicly from publicly available sources and the books that I read sa mga researches din natin. So hanggang, uh, dun po nanggaling yung mga sources natin. So I currently work in the Armed Forces of the Philippines, uh, but my lecture is not an official lecture or statement from this organization, or at least related to the current efforts of the Philippine Navy or or the in the defense of the uh, Philippine Navy or AFP as a whole. So mostly more on research din tong uh, presentation ko. Then something I do not consider myself as an expert. Marami po tayong estudyante dito, marami tayong mga um, who started and who studies uh, in the field of IT, IT security, uh, information security, cyber security. I also, same as you, I also, uh, as part of those, uh, nag start pa lang on the level of the cyber security. I mean, in the field of cyber security. So our objective for today or for this afternoon, I... I hope we would learn about the basic about Security Operations Center and what are those considerations in building Security Operations Center. Um, I'll be using the .NPLF framework, which is common on the military side. Uh, we are co uh, common din naman sa atin, yung uh, people, process, and technology, but I will be uh, uh, sharing about the .NPLF, which is also uh, publicly available lang, lang din naman po yung mga ano niya sources on how we build a uh, foundation in our cyber security. So, yun ya. There are a lot of lectures din kanina. Marami akong natutunan actually. Um, there are lots of challenges na nangyayari within our organization. I mean, I mean within our country or or the whole world. Kung tutuusin. So, mostly uh, mas mabilis na kasi ngayon and we are dependent on the cyber security. Now, um, challenges natin, there's an increase of the number of devices na meron tayo. We, uh, intro, introduction of BYODs, IOTs, even our defenses, and even dun sa mga infrastructure guys, meron tayong mga network infrastructure. 
sa mga administrator natin, meron tayong dinagdag na mga defenses, meron tayong dinagdag na mga uh, peripherals, network peripherals para sa papabilis yung ano natin, yung activities natin. We have websites and so on and so forth. Marami tayo. Because in this time of COVID, lalo na sa COVID-19, uh, there's an increase of demand dun sa information technology na meron tayo. So ngayon, and there is an increased number of devices within our organization. For example, there's also an increase of vector of attack. So tumataas yung, uh, dumadami yung vector of attack within the organization. With that, the second challenges natin, lalo na sa defensive side, is that we don't have a, or we, we don't have or we have a less visibility within our network. So it is a problem. Another thing is that we have also to balance, lalo na sa mga CISO level, we have to balance the availability versus the security. In between that, in between those uh, availability and security, we have also this trade-off. It requires trade-offs. That includes uh, financial, logistical, and even the people skills, even the privacy so, meron talagang trade-offs depende sa controls na ilalagay natin for our security. So, what are those trends dito sa cybersecurity? As mentioned kanina, dumadami yung ano natin, uh, ang mga devices na meron tayo. The technology accelerates. There's an acceleration of technology. And kung meron ganun, there's a uh, volume of possible uh, tax alerts kung makikita natin kung makikita natin yung mga attacks sa atin so there's a uh, increase of alerts mga incidents na makikita natin mga events na makikita natin and the sophistication itself nag-a-advance din yung mga attacks or or mga threats natin nagde-develop din uh, then another thing is yung speed gaano ba kabilis yung mga incident and attacks na nag -upur. And I hope so, nakikita natin. The problem is that pag hindi natin nakita. Okay? The another, another challenges or another trend sa atin is yung cybersecurity knowledge or yung skills ng mga personnel natin. So, I'm, I'm in the government organization. I uh, personally experience na... Uh, there are lots of personnel natin na hindi talaga ganun ka uh, knowledgeable, which is also assigned also with the uh, cyber na. So, yan, magiging challenge natin yan. Hindi lang yan, but also sa mga, lalo na sa atin, mga students, uh, I know there's still a gap, pero masusolusyon na naman natin yan. But in the trends, ngayon, there's an increase of demand of personnel talaga natin na mag-inline in cybersecurity. Okay. And next, for the defensive point of view, I will be showing the David Bianco's uh, Pyramid of Fame. So, karaniwan, lalo sa defensive side, saan ba tayo mag start So, we have this, um, lalo na, if ever wala tayong tools, uh, it's very impossible naman, in organization, walang tools. But the, the end point itself, meron na tayong mga built-in na mga tools. So, we have the hash values, uh, pa partnerin yan sa mga threat intel database ng mga uh, mga manufacturer and also there, there's uh, I mean in 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 my presentation there's a level of sophistication paano natin ma-detect paano natin ma-check or paano natin makita if there's an attack or there's an attempt or there's a threat within your organization so you have your IOC based inter, uh, uh, indicators of compromise na base of detection uh, ano pa, tool-based detection natin and anomaly-based or behavioral-based detection and medyo talagang mahirap when we have this all information down the line paano natin yung i-coconnect-connect so that we could have a TTP or even using the uh, uh, MITRE ATTACK framework paano natin may incorporate yung mga nakikita natin to have a TTP-based uh, detection o paano natin pag-aralan yung isang uh, possible uh, attacks in an organization. So, yun, medyo mahirap. With that, in a defensive side, 
So sometimes we we hear the security operation center. So it is part of our control. Now, ano ba yung ma-imagine natin when you hear uh, security operation center? Would it be like uh, this one? Or man lang ng tatlong tao with a monitor in the front? Or maybe, or isang tao lang, which is, I don't think, kakayanin ba? But, um, Depende. Depende kasi sa organization. Ganong kalaki yung organization. No? What are the needs of their organization? So what is the a security operation center? According to a book uh, by Don Murdoch, uh, maganda itong book actually, uh, when we started to plan a SOC, what are the basis about SOC? So it is a centralized team in a single organization that monitors uh, the information technology environment for vulnerabilities and authorized activity, acceptable use, and uh, violation with our policies, procedures, and intrusion into and out of the network and provides direct support to the cyber incident response. So mostly, it's, it is a team. For example, we have the people, process, and technology. Uh, the security operation center composes of these three elements. We have the people and the what are the processes within the organization and what are the technology? So, ito po yung nagbubuo. Wala, kung wala yung isa dyan, kung wala tayong people, we only have process, we only have technology, so hindi po magbubuo yung SOC. Um, some other says that, uh, what if we have an automated technology? Now, it still needs a people. Sino yung magmaman yan? Sino yung magde-declare na close na yung ticket, na action na na yan? And there's a problem also in automation kasi mag, meron ding increase ng events natin, meron ding increase ng mga false positives. So, dapat merong magka-counter check and syempre, meron ding tao magsiset ng mga automation. Depende on the playbook or what is the process ng isang uh, security operation center. Behind that, your process and uh, technology and your people, you also have your governance behind them. Now, Kung wala po yung governance, uh, wala po yung mga leaders natin, remember that the leaders are the one who will approve your budget, your planning, your efforts, and anything within the SOC, um, sila din yung mga approving entity. So that's why it is important to consider uh, your governance. That's why maganda po yung lecture kanina, paano natin, uh, paano tayo makapag- uh, Paano natin ibenta yung cyber security dun sa mga leaders natin? Uh, maraming salamat po sa lecturers din. So, yun. Another thing, there is sometimes a confusion between the network operation center and the security operation center. So, very common po yan, lalo na sa pag kaka-start lang ng isang organization into cyber security. So, both, I will uh, discuss on the similarity and the differences of these two. So network operation center and security operation center share uh, the same goal. So their goal is to have a safe and healthy environment para dun sa mga uh, sa, sa organization itself. So kailangan nating um, safe and secure and healthy environment. So yun yung mga goal nila. Now, the difference is that they have unique way in achieving their goal. So, may kanya-kanya silang task in there, uh, although we, they have the same goal. So, so, Network Operation Center focuses on the network system's performance. And this team, uh, the NOC IT team, manages, monitors, and maintains the systems within the network, keep, keeping them patched, up-to-date, and working properly and securely. Now, the SOC focuses on uh, security and effective threat detection. The SOC sa cyber or, or the, the SOC analyst or the SOC operators provides 24-7 uh, real-time monitoring, policy creation, implementation, and provide both proactive measures uh, assist in the event of the cyber incident. So cyber incident, si SOC is nag, ano lang siya, um, to support. But um, kasi... Iba yung incident response team. Maybe some organization, the SOC itself is the incident response team. But uh, uh, in a bigger context, uh, it is a separate team na mag-assist din si SOC. 
kasi it involves also the experts, the not, uh, uh, specialist kasama doon, mga developers for example, a network uh, network guys also kasama din sa, sa cyber incident response team. Depende yun sa setup ng organization. But both network operation center and security operation center are closely working together. So why does the organization uh, needs the security operation center? So an ano sa kaya sa tingin natin? So unang-una, the primary purpose of a SOC is to aid in the protection of assets in the organization. Uh, recently lang na-discuss din what are those example ng assets and I will give also yung example no, ano yung mga assets natin. So assets includes information infrastructure, IT-related peripherals na ginagamit natin to expedite, minimize yung workload natin, maximize natin yung working hours, or increase yung efficiency natin. So so those are things na ginagamit natin. So it also considers an asset. Our intellectual property, our personnel in the organization, and many other things that has value in the organization is considered as an asset. So also, other than asset protection, we need to have a centralized monitoring, a bird's eye view on our assets and our defenses. So yun yung kailangan natin. And building a SOC, what are those things that we need to consider? Previously, I, I define, uh, I give an example what are the possible goals in our organization uh, to have a asset protection and a bird's eye view in your asset and defenses. So the next is we need to consider first before we build a SOC is to, I, I said that we have asset protection as our goal. We need to identify also what are those assets that we need to protect. So kung ano yung meron sa atin, ilalatag natin yan. Which is later on, I will also discuss on the .mplf framework. You can use it for your asset management or asset uh, audit nyo. Anong meron kayo? Anong mga existing? So pwede natin gamitin yon later on. Another requirement is for us to have an enterprise network. It would be better kasi mas mahirap then you have a SOC, then you don't have an enterprise network, so anong pinoprotection na natin. Or maybe uh, meron tayong mga systems that also be considered. Next, with your existing assets, with your existing network, so what are those risks? Magkakandak tayo ng risk assessment. What are those risks incorporated with those assets? So, doon na papasok yung mga risk, uh, risk assessment ng mga process. Then, with this corresponding risk, what are the uh, possible solutions to mitigate or at least minimize the impact of this uh, risk? So what are those controls na may incorporate natin? Now, with that, umalatag na natin yon. what are your um, assets, ano yung existing sa organization, and what are the possible solutions in between that is the gaps. So yung gaps naman, you can use that MPLF framework naman dun sa mga gaps natin or even the people, process, and technology, we can we can assess what are the existing and what are our controls in the future. So in between that, i-cross natin yan. So in between that is your gap. So try natin i-fill up so that ma-provide uh, natin what are those controls na gusto nating mangyari. So we have the gaps. Then we have also the requirement identification based on the gaps that, that we assess. Then we have to prioritize. See, so later on, I will be discussing also the NARCAP group and the security reference. There are lots of solutions. So with that, we need to have a prioritization dun sa requirement natin. So hindi naman, most of the organization, hindi nila kayang i-provide lahat Ito yung na-identify ng CISO na controls. Ito yung mga defenses natin, din provide nyo agad sa akin. No, it's not like that. There's always be a process, a timeline, prioritization, kung ano dapat yung uunahin natin. Based dun sa risk 
na na-identify natin. The next is to have a plan validation. You have your timeline, you have your uh, prioritization, then we need to have a validation. Now, saan ba natin pinapavalidate yung ano natin, controls? Or even yung, for example, projects natin or yung mga solutions natin. So we need an expert opinion within the organization possible you may ask an expert opinion outside the organization especially those organization who has an experience in for example in the security operation center before we present it to the leaders uh, also we have to also to consider what are those uh, part my department don't organization especially the financial and the logistics parts kaya bayan nila providean yung gusto nating mangyari so part yun sa mga planning and assessment before we present it to the leaders. Kung feasible ba yung solution natin, which is later on. So what are those possible solutions in protect, protecting our assets? So we have, yun niya, people, the process, and technology. So as you can see, we have uh, policy management, prevention na part dito sa left side natin, so more on process. Operations, which is nandiyan yung mga security operations natin, monitoring and response, and the layered security. So from perimeter, network, endpoint application, and data. So depende rin sa demand. I mean, depende sa what are the existing assets ng isang organization. It is a very, very uh, complicated implementation ng kung gusto natin i-apply with, with the same uh, defense in depth for the example lang the fund. So, I haven't seen an organization na uh, full solution with the same implementation sa mga nakita nyo ngayon. But um, it still depends on the capacity and the demand on what are those assets na kailangan ni protect. For example, um, hindi ka naman pwedeng bumili ng Mercedes-Benz para lang pupunta ka ng palengke, bibili ka ng kamatis. So, parang ganun na concept. So, you have also to assess what are what is the purpose, what are those assets na kailangan natin i-protect. So, before we implement those things. So, yan yung mga roles na mga uh, leaders natin. I mean, yung mga C-level in terms of cybersecurity. So, we have to assess. Hindi, yan, nakita ko sa internet, ganyan. So, implement natin yan. So, that's not it. Okay. So I'll be proceeding on the .mplf framework. So it is a common uh, framework that was used in military. It is a review. Review is the uh, .mplf review is the due diligence exercise in determining the acceptability, suitability, and feasibility of a proposed force design of a uh, organization. So some sometimes we used it as a uh, part of the planning um, assessment. Uh, asset assessment namin, asset identification, gap analysis, and any other na mga, or even assessment for future reference. Um, yun. So maraming paggagamitin yung .MPL framework. So this is a uh, composed, it is an acronym composed of doctrines, organization, training, material, uh, uh, personnel, leadership, and facility. Uh, minsan, iba pa is meron pang policy. So what are those things? Or what are those elements? First, we have the doctrine. So yung doctrine na yan, it is, um, there is a strategic, operational, and tactical. So, dapat in, in, in building a SOC, so you, you must have a guidance. So does your organization meron na bang guidance? Meron na bang higher higher uh, guidance para dun sa yung organization for example. So first yung higher level, yung strategic level. So strategic is more on analysis. Uh, examines the way the organization counter its conflict or threats. That uh, has an emphasis on maneuver or approach dun sa warfare, for example cyber warfare. So, yun yung higher guidance in an organization. Operational, mostly dito naglalaro si Security Operation Center and dun sa tactical level. So, operational, it is more on the task delegation sa isang organization. What are their, their specific responsibilities per organization? 
interoperability which is very important kagaya ng discuss kanina the, the NOC, the SOC how, how they uh, interoperate what are the integrations and operational approach or even sa mga processes natin incident response processes risk management um, and any other processes within the organization the tactical level is more on specific level so this more focuses on the people the process and the technology level so how can we use it how 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 these things works and how can we contribute dun sa operational level so the ttps is introduced yung very common naman to sa mga cyber personnel natin the tactics techniques and procedures so dito yun na part the next the organization so does our organization needs to establish ba yung so so isa din yung tanong and so organization itself yes uh, we we have to establish the SOC for example then we have to identify the hierarchy sa, sa lower level or operational level what are the hierarchy dun sa mga personnel natin so later on sa personnel may pakita ko picture dun what are those uh, hierarchy what are those uh, composition ng SOC but on the higher context organization itself as a whole um, how how this um, every department how this every branches works together so that will be composed of the organization so what is the interoperability yun very important sa isang organization reporting system communication kasama na dyan. training so, kagaya ng sinabi ko kanina, we have people, process, and technology, part of the people, we also have the training itself. So, training, skills training is very important. Kailangan natin ma-define yun, what are the skills, as mentioned kanina, with the, sa part ng Comptia din. You have a roadmap, there are lots of uh, organization na uh, offers training, there are, um, kagaya ng mga sponsors din natin, uh, lots of organization who offers a training. We check the roadmap, ano ba yung kailangan natin from tactical level, operational level, even even yung mga leaders natin, even yung mga um, planners natin also uh, needs training, for example. So, kailangan natin yung training, continuous development, kailangan natin sa mga personnel natin. Um, training on the technology, since remember, we have technology in a SOC, how we can operate it, how can we maintain those technologies, and how can we develop, for example, kung meron naman tayong research and development would be better. Kaya nating mag-develop ng sarili nating tools. So, part in yun. Certification, yes, it is um, important. Siguro yung iba, hindi na, um, some others, hindi naman kailangan raw. But uh, certification, it is an important thing also to give a confidence dun sa tao natin and at least motivation for them to learn and to test them kung meron ba talaga silang natutunan. Team training is very important. Mag-conduct tayo ng drills within the organization. How can we interoperate with the other uh, personnel in the SOC itself out in the organization itself, paano tayo mag operate lalo na pag may mangyari. So, ano yung gagawin natin? So, kailangan natin ng drills, simulation, and um, training with the other, uh, for example, sa AFP. Um, from the Navy, for example, we conduct a drill. Uh, what if pag AFP wide yung attack? So, we also have to conduct a drill kasama yung other branch of services, the, the Army and the Air Force, for example. So that is a very important part of training, the interoperability of every branches sa isang organization. Collaboration is very important. Dagdag ko lang sa training is uh, cyber range. Mas maganda yung, yung isang organization other than the SOC, meron ding cyber range, although part ng facility, but uh, also it, it is been used for these... Uh, training to develop yung personnel natin sa SOC itself also we can use it also in securing our system so red team, blue team and collaboration ng dalawa 
the purple teaming process. So it's very important sa isang organization. As mentioned, team exercise, simulation, kanina nasabi ko na mga drills kailangan natin within the organization. Especially, also our leaders has also must have trainings such as IT management. Meron, there are lots of trainings uh, related to IT uh, management, IT security, for example, ISC squared, and among others, ISACA, and di ko na ma-mention, basta maraming mga uh, trainings available sa public. And that is uh, commercialized. Meron ring mga free. I, I myself is a product of almost free certificates attendance actually. And some other free, av free available na mga sources dyan sa internet. So, kung wala kayong pera, lalo na sa mga students natin, there are a lot of free resources. So, ang kalaban nyo na lang talaga is yung sarili nyo. If you are interested or not, or nagiging boring, so marami talagang free. I do encourage you to develop yourself. The next, the dot MPLF sa dulo niya is facility. But I, I, bago ako mag-proceed sa material, I will look up into the facility first before ako mag-proceed sa material. So the facility, we have to check, we have to identify what are the, Again, the organizational needs, kung kailangan ba natin ng on-premise na solution ng SOC or i-outsource ba natin or yung sa MSSP, the Managed Security Service Provider, or cloud-based ba yung SOC natin or it is a hybrid setup. Kung on-premise naman, we have to consider a lot of things. So physical security, environment, ano ba yung nakapalibot sa atin pag malapit ba tayo sa dagat, what are those things na we need to consider uh, kung mababa ba yung sila, nandun ba tayo maglagay ng SOC dun sa uh, below sea level kaila, or dapat nasa higher so kailangan natin i-assess yun. Location natin, yung design ng SOC, HVAC system, even sa data centers meron to dapat. And the power management and pwede ko as mentioned, cyber range, it is not part of a SOC pero important thing na dapat sana mayroong magkaroon tayo ng ganun. On-premise or on-cloud. And redundancy sites. Very important. Redundancy sites. And kung sa processes naman, we have backup, uh, business continuity, uh, disaster recovery plans, meron dapat tayong mga nakalatag yun. So, ano yung mga facility requirements natin regarding that matter? The next is the material. So what are those requirements for the following, uh, or what are those uh, requirements natin in terms of tools, capabilities, and resources natin? Depende kasi sa setup. Kaya nuna ko yung facility kasi we have to choose if it is a cloud-based or on-premise. So in, in general context, so these are the common uh, capabilities and tools na meron dapat tayo sa isang uh, security operation center. First is the SIM or the... Uh, security information event management natin. Dapat meron siyang data correlation. Siyempre, part na sa kanya yung normalization ng mga datas. Um, use cases, responses, uh, behavioral as much as possible. Uh, threat hunting, reporting is very important sa isang security operation center na meron tayong mga reporting. Uh, although ito sa ano na to, sa SIM is automated na reports. Uh, assessment, audit, risk management within dun sa mga connected sa kanya na mga tools. So what are those connected na tools? We have EDR or Endpoint Detection Response sa so mga Endpoint Security natin or XDR. Uh, ticketing System, it is part na rin ng SIM dapat yun or, or pwede tayo mag-create ng another ticketing system basta naka-incorporate with the SIM. Uh, intrusion detection system, which is part also the next generation firewall. Meron na yung IDs, IPS, and so on and so forth. Meron man tayong mga solutions dyan. Uh, as mentioned, with the fan, with the North Cap Grumman na uh, picture ko kanina na ibigay, there's a level of security. So, dun, incorporate natin yun into one single uh, area. Next, uh, very important thing, uh, threat intelligence platform. Uh, 
that would either be commercialized or you have your own database for your in threat intelligence. And sandboxing, pwede natin idagdag. And others, pwede tayong magdagdag vulnerability management system. The SOAR, if you want to automate yung incident response natin, but remember the SOAR itself, hindi yan talaga nagkakandak ng automatic na incident response. Depende pa rin yan sa naset natin na playbooks or yung kung automate, we have run books. So depende pa rin yan sa naset ng isang organization. Minsan kasi we have also a human intervention dun sa uh, during incident response. Network access control, uh, DLP, data loss prevention systems, at artificial intelligence if meron tayo, lalo na uh, if capable din yung personnel natin to analyze or even uh, to develop uh, AI. WAF, if we have uh, web, uh, web websites, we need uh, web application firewalls, anti-spam for the emails, and honeypots or honey nets, and so on and so forth. Maybe some others hindi mag-agree sa akin dito na ito yung component, but um, there are lots of components na pwede pa natin ilagay sa SOC. As mentioned, it still depends on the organizational requirements or depende sa value din ng assets niya. The next is the personnel. So sa personnel itself, um, it composes from the people and also the processes na meron ang uh, isang organization. It start from the hiring process. What are those qualification? What is the background of the personnel na gusto natin i-hire? Or I mean, ano ba yung mga qualifications na gusto natin? Then we assess their backgrounds. Uh, what, pag makapasok na, what is the onboarding process, the security clearances, non-disclosure agreement is very important. Um, then, we also have to consider the personal morale, personal development, uh, rotation, part of the security, rotation policy, uh, promotion, uh, pakaganda po yan, uh, to encourage our personnel, compensation, and next, pagkalis, what are the offboarding processes na meron din tayo within the organization and among others. Um, sa SOC, as given sa picture natin, uh, although part ng organization to, we have tier 1, the alert ana, uh, analyst natin. So there are the frontliners in our SOC and the incident responders in the tier 2 level and you have your uh, subject matter experts dun sa naka, ano sa kanila, depende sa level. So, kailangan natin, ito, merong alert, di ko na kaya to, iakyat ko na to sa inyo. Or magiging incident na to, then we need to uh, assistance from our subject matter experts. So, that composes of the personnel within SOC. Leadership. As mentioned ko kanina, um, we have people, process, and technology composes a SOC, but behind the success of the security operation center or the SOC itself is not a SOC. If there's no support from the uh, leadership. So it is very important na it, uh, ma clearly define natin yung ano ba yung purpose ng SOC and para lalo na pag we need to um, we need to have a approval yung mga plan natin uh, assessment natin with the SOC and also uh, what are the efforts natin sa SOC. So th there's a big role yung leadership natin. So the leadership, they are the one who will support uh, they, are they covers the governance, the approval, and also the approving entity yung sinasabi ko. And some others, uh, there are some evaluators din dun sa leadership. Kaya nga, uh, they are the one who will approve what are the efforts within the security operation center. Uh, a leader must having a, uh, dapat meron siyang, uh, I mean, leaders must have a, being a strategic think, thinker is a must to become a leader. So that is very important. For a leader also who have to, an experience and operation and tactical uh, would be better. But uh, the most important thing sa isang leader is uh, to have a uh, being a strategic thinker. My last slide, the conclusion, um, cybersecurity, always remember, is not about shopping. It's about 
ha- understanding. So remember, again, people, process, and technology, for me, it is not interchangeable. So we need to develop first our people. And we have pe- uh, the process and technology to follow. Now, uh, as I have said, it is not interchangeable. There are some organization who always started to uh, procure some technologies. Then, magkaka-problema po tayo dun. Kasi hindi kaya na manage ng tao. You don't have existing processes in your organization. So that's what I mean na hindi dapat interchangeable yun. We need to develop first our people. So, again, cybersecurity is not about shopping. So, that's all for me uh, for this afternoon. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you so much for that, Mr. Uh, uh, General or Lieutenant General. We would like to ask you to please stay for a bit for our question and answer portion. So for our participants, you may drop your questions on the comment section of our social media platform. And while waiting for the questions from our audience, uh, we will we will uh, flash our winners sa hashtag for, for the t-shirt prizes. So, uh, Sir Janil, wait lang, sir, while waiting for our participants' question. Uh, I think here it is, sir. We have four questions here uh, from Sir Mark Hadrian Alegre Odasco. Kung magbibuild kami ng SOC as startup, ano-ano ang mga tools and appliances? Ano-anong tools and appliances ang recommended nyo as beginner pa lang po? Yun. Um, thank you very much for the question. As I have mentioned, it still depends on the organizational assets. So first, siguro uh, I would say na kailangan kasi natin ng ano, um, bird's eye view. For example, yung sa assets natin. Um, siguro sa akin, for, uh, we have a endpoint security, the, the uh, perimeter security, for example, kung sa network lang. So you have both endpoint and perimeter, then you have your SIEM. So that's it for me. So for them, kung lalo na pa nag-start, depende rin kasi sa, ano eh, depende rin kasi yan sa capacity ng isang organization. So, right, thank you so much. All right. Thank you so much for that, um, Sir Janril. We have our, our second question from Christine Aguilar. All right. In our current situation with the rise of cyber attacks do you think we are all prepared for interoperability across all government and private sectors yun very ano kung paano ba tayo ka prepared dun sa organization anyway as i have mentioned um Sa Navy lang po. Uh, for the whole government itself, siguro makakasagot niyan is within the, uh, the the ICT level kasi sila naman yung nasa hierarchy. But I think, maybe yes, maybe no, but I, I still don't know the right answer for that. Sir. Sorry, sorry. Awesome. <laughs> Thank you, sir. That's okay. And then we have again a question from Mr. Demranan. So, what is the right time to build SOC in the organization, sir? Uh, direct question now. <laughs> as, as mentioned, there's a level of sophistication and there's an increase of demand of the information technology sa panahon natin ngayon. And yun, kailangan natin na kapag-establish na security as much as possible, as long as kaya na sa organization, as much as possible ngayon na uh, kailangan nating mag-build ng SOC within the organization. Alright. Alright, uh, I guess meron pa ulit another question, Sir Janet. So medyo maraming nagtatanong sa topic niya, Sir. Sige lang. Uh, 
Next is, can can a reservist work or apply for a full-time role in a SOC or IT <laughs> Department of Philippine Army, maybe her Air Force? Yes, uh, definitely. Uh, Meron chances as long as they are reservists. Depende kasi sa demand din ng organization. All right, so that's a yeah, uh, definitely yes for Sir Daniel. Okay. Thank you, sir. And for our last question, last sir, question sir. Uh, yes, sir. This would be our last question. Sir, can you suggest a good firewall? Good firewall. <laughs> Very subjective, I think. Hindi ako makapagsabi ng brand, but I will, uh, as much as possible, uh, stick tayo with the open source. Lalo na pag nag start pa tayo. Okay? Start tayo with the open source as long, para malimit natin yung ano. Uh, hindi ko naman sinasabi pag open source, wala tayong gastos. Magkakaroon pa tayo ng minimal na gastos. So, from there, yung mag-start tayo from open source, there are a lot of open sources available in the public. Especially PF Sense. So that was it. So right, well, once, thank you. All right, once again, again, we would like to thank you, Mr. John Will, for taking time to be part of our cybersecurity event, Hacking Kanalang 2022. And as a way of honoring you for sharing your expertise, we would like to present this award to you. Okay, so a uh, certificate of appreciation. Uh, Sir General. So this certificate is awarded to um, Lieutenant Great Junior uh, General Sarah of Philippine Navy in recognition of your commitment of giving valuable um, contribution and insights to Hacking Kanalang 2022 Cybersecurity Conference given this 19th of February 2022. Thank you so much once again, Sir General. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Stay safe. Stay safe. Standing by. All right. So continue to share our live to reach more people and take advantage of this free cybersecurity webinar. And, and once again, we would like to remind everyone our Catch the Flag or CTF is ongoing. Once again, we would like you to pay attention on or stay focused on our presenters as we may flash the flag at any time. Once again, we are encouraging everyone to participate in this activity. Um, we can now flash the winners of our t-shirts. Just give us a moment. All right, so congratulations to Miss Chenny Lorena Dizan uh, for the hashtag for our official hashtag, including hashtag PH Navy. Our Philippine Navy. Next, congratulations, uh, Anna Ferrando. All right, so good governance and using our hashtags. All right, next is uh, Yerushalayim Natividad Naling. All right, so congratulations, guys. Uh, you won Globe merchandise as well as LPI 30% um, voucher. And before we proceed on our next speaker, we would like to thank all of our sponsors and partners again for making this event possible, starting with Mile 2, Linux Professional Institute, Saka Manila Chapter, Globe My Business, and Comtia. So moving on to our next speaker, he is a cybersecurity senior consultant at Saka Manila. He is a senior associate in cybersecurity practice of CCIP Gores, Belayo, and Cop. A member practice of Ernst and Young Global. Currently, the Security Operations Center subject matter resource in Manila. Six, six years cybersecurity engineering and administration experience. Certified ITIL practitioner. With ex extensive expert expertise in the field of cybersecurity. Right. Security alerts and incident monitoring and remediation. Network security policy implementation administering different security tools and appliances and security operations with the topic security operations in the cloud let us all welcome mr angelo james baldo viso hello sir, sir hello hello good afternoon everyone can can you hear me yes, is my yes. audio clear 
Hello. Um, yeah. Um, hello, everyone. Good afternoon once again. So my name is James, and I work as a cyber senior consultant uh, for SGV Technology Consulting, and I'm an ISACA member. So my role here for today as a speaker is to share with you another topic that contributes in achieving the best practice possible with building, running, or enhancing cybersecurity operations or a security operation center in the cloud. Um, aside from that, I would also want to share my personal SOC experience built from various interactions that I had from other organization, companies, and industries. So again, um, good afternoon, and thank you for inviting me here. You're welcome, Sir Angelo. And before we finally give you the floor, we would like to remind our audience to share our live stream using the official hashtags, and this time in including Hashtag Isaka Manila chapter. And this will be our official hashtags for this topic. Make sure to have it up or include that on your um, on your post. Winners will be announced after Mr. Angelo's presentation. So we will now officially give you the floor, Mr. Angelo. So let's All right. So let me uh, present my screen. Let me know if you can see my screen. There you go. Can you see the presentation? Yes, sir. All right. So once again, good afternoon. My name is James. I am from the Cyber Security um, under SGV Technology Consulting. So um, actually, it's a good transition since uh, Lieutenant Junior John have shared his knowledge already about on building the Security Operations Center. So uh, my slide would be probably on uh, echoing on what John have shared earlier and try to add um, items on what he discussed. <laughs> so to start with, um, he defined that security operation center is a command center, right? So it's just typically a room. So it's uh, it's just a room or a command center facility for cybersecurity professionals who monitors, analyze, and protect an organization from any cybersecurity attack. And Security operations as well responds to alerts generated by the various security monitoring tools. Um, this includes um, intrusion detection, um, intrusion prevention systems, um, raw data from firewalls, router, um, databases, and even behavioral analytics to identify the potential information security incidents, just like uh, security attacks and anomalous activities. But I, I'd like also to emphasize this, that um, yes, SOC is a room. Uh, it's just a command center. But who are the persons working inside that room? So let me try to um, define each and every um, roles and responsibilities of these individuals. So the roles of SOC personnel typically break into different tiers or level according to their involvement in an incident. Uh, timeline and severity. So the common roles and responsibilities for a SOC team are, uh, first, we have our level one analyst or our secu security analyst. So they are responsible for monitoring the vulnerabilities, security incidents, or security alerts, rather, um, performing uh, triaging and escalating those security incidents that warrant it. And next to that is we have our senior analyst or our level two uh, support. So um, level two support are in charge of investigating and responding to incidents, then performing um, response and recovery process to remediate an incident impact. And then there are cases where in some organization include the CSERT or the incident response team within this level and then the other uh, organization actually sometimes um, it is outside the level two. So they have a different department or different team called um, incident response team. And then the third one would be our threat hunters. So threat hunters, they are responsible for assessing IT security infrastructure according to the latest um, threat intelligence to determine unexpected or stealthy means of network entry. And then we also have our managers. So our SOC managers, they are responsible for overseeing the entire team 
and reporting the findings, um, action plans, and threat notifications to the organization's CISO. So basically, based on that um, roles and responsibilities, <coughs> SOC has a two core responsibilities. One is investigating the suspicious activities, and the other one is maintaining the security monitoring tools. So let's try to uh, define or expound more about investigating suspicious activities. So the SOC team should investigate um, suspicious and malicious activity within the networks and the organization's systems. So generally, um, the SIEM or analytics software will uh, trigger an alert and then the SOC will perform these following processes. So first, they perform alert triaging. So what is alert triaging? So basically, alert triaging is that the SOC collects and correlates the log data and provide um, provides tools that allow analysts to review the data and detect relevant security events. And then the other one is um, alert prioritization. So the analyst needs to leverage their knowledge of the business environment and then the threat landscape to prioritize the alerts and decide which security events represent the real security incidents because not all um, security, uh, not all security events can be considered as a security incident. And then the third one would be the remediation and recovery. So here, once the incident is discovered, our analysts are responsible for mitigating the threat, cleaning affected system, and recovering them from normal or recovering them to normal working condition. And lastly would be the post uh, mortem and reporting. So this is important function of the SOC. Um, this is for them to document the organization's response to an incident and then perform additional forensic analysis if it's needed to ensure that the threat that has been identified has been fully contained. And at the same time, they'll be able to learn from the incident, from that incident to improve their processes. And then the other um <coughs> responsibility or uh, core responsibility of SOC is maintaining security monitoring tools. So the team must maintain and update their tools regularly. So without the correct tools, they cannot properly secure their systems and network. So just like what um John have mentioned earlier, right? Um <coughs> there there are multiple security tools out there. So it's the responsibility of the management to ensure that they um, and uh, update their system because the cybersecurity attacks are evolving. So we cannot just rely on one security tools or like, for example, our, our firewall has been outdated. It's, it's the traditional firewall. So the, the cybersecurity attacks can really bypass that firewall if we're still using or if the, organiza if the organization still uses the traditional firewall. So to compensate that, we need to transform from traditional firewall to the next generation firewall in order for them to uh, learn more uh, about those um, latest attacks. So um, just like what um, Lieutenant John have iterated earlier that the SOC is not just a single asset. Um, actually, it is a collection of people, processes, and technologies that work together to protect and defend the organization. So on the technology on the technological front, the digital backbone of the security center is comprised of numerous key components. So these are a few examples. So actually, John have shared earlier some of the tools. So I'll be just providing a, a brief description about these um, technologies. So first is the SAEM or the Security Information and, and Event Management. So this system actually aggregates and correlates the data from your network or from the organization's network and then from the device security feeds. And then the other one is the digital assessment and monitoring systems. So this tool detects anomalous behavior or activity. So this is not just only the, the malware that have seen on your machine. It's more of your um, user interaction or user behavior. So if um, there's unusual 
logins to your computer or browsing uh, unusual browsing to a website, it will fire an alert to the SOC analyst for them to, to review if it's um, expected. Next one is prevention tools. So prevention tools, these are like um, antivirus or firewalls. So yeah, um, next is threat detection tools. So threat detection tools um, use artificial intelligence and machine learnings to recognize suspicious activity and escalate it to escalated it within the SOC or the security operation center. So <clears throat> what probably one example could be um, the, the endpoint detection and response or the EDR solution. Next is threat response capabilities. So that use of um, intelligent automation to automatically uh, respond to, to low level security threat and routine incidents. So some uh, with, with this technology actually lessen the task of our analyst. So it's more of the automation um, in, in the process. <clears throat> so now we have a better understanding of what SOC is and more significantly, who the individuals behind these operations are, as well as their respective roles and responsibilities um, in order to, to, keep, to keep the gears running. So now let's put security aside for a moment and talk about this game changer for the business as well as for the information technology, which is the cloud. But uh, what is cloud, right? So <coughs> actually, the word itself is a strange to, to many of us. But in reality, we all utilize it. We all utilize it on a regular basis through um, services such as online banking. Um, social networking sites, and actually many more, but we don't realize that we are already using the cloud. So for me, I can describe the cloud um, as a delivery of various services through the mode of internet. And these resources are tools and applications. So for example, um, data storage, servers, um, database, um, software and networking. So yeah. That that's cloud for me is. <clears throat> um, but now let's try to to identify or define the characteristics of cloud computing. So first, so first we have the on-demand self-service. So on-demand self-service actually, um, an organization or a businesses can order a service into the cloud 24 by 7 and it is immediately available. So users can always provision their resources and use them without human intervention from the service provider. Next one is broad network access. So resources are basically available over the network and can be accessed by diverse client platforms. Next is resource pooling. So <clears throat> this is aggregation of physical resources in a multi-tenant environment. So meaning there are multiple customers that can share same infrastructure and applications with security and privacy, um, as well as multiple customers are being serviced from the same physical resources. Um, next is rapid um, elasticity. So <laughs> this is an additional capacity uh, or additional capacity would be available as when as and when it is needed. So it automatically and quickly acquires and disposes re, uh, resources. So it quickly and easily scale up or scale down based on the demand of the organization or or um, of the users rather. Then next is we have a measured service. So the the consumption for cloud service is fully tracked and users are billed accordingly and automatically. So users basically pay correctly for what they have used um, in, in, in cloud. <coughs> so actually there are three well-known deployment models for cloud computing. So we have public, private, and hybrid clouds. So 
um, to to give you a background, uh, a public cloud is uh, owned by a cloud provider, <coughs> um, but is made available to the public. So with public cloud, there are three famous um, cloud provider. We have Microsoft Azure, we have Google Cloud, and then Amazon Web Services. While a private cloud is typically owned by an organization, which also controls the access to the cloud. Um, then lastly, we have uh, the hybrid cloud or a combination of public and private clouds. <coughs> um, now, let's take a look on each and every deployment models. So we have a public cloud. So in a public cloud, the, the cloud infrastructure is basically owned by a cloud provider and it is accessible to the public over the internet. So the cloud provider hosts the, the cloud infrastructure and end users can access it remotely without the need to buy and set up a working environment. So just like what um, John have mentioned earlier, <coughs> right? Um, when building SOC or with, when using technologies, um, you need to consider the, the, the hardware, the appliances, but with cloud, um, you're no longer need to worry about those aspects because um, it will be a uh, responsibility of the cloud service provider to provision um, those things for you. So basically, public cloud uh, resources are shared among different end users. So it's basically a, a huge data center wherein all um, public cloud customers um, data are stored in there. So in, in can you just you can just imagine, uh, let's say, one rack of servers, there are multiple data there, uh, data that in there, um, that's being managed by multiple organizations. So, so yeah, so public cloud users are typically charged for the duration for which their services are, are used. So, however, um, public cloud charge models vary across different providers. And additionally, um, the security and terms of use are defined by their providers or the cloud security uh, cloud service providing provider, meaning um, end users must work within the constraints of the provider when using their services. <coughs> um, next is private cloud. So in this second type of cloud, the cloud infrastructure is basically um, owned by the organization itself. The infrastructure is accessible to specific users via the organization's intranet. So meaning they just own it. Um, it other organization or other businesses cannot access their, their data <coughs> or they cannot um, share rather their, their, um, their infrastructure or their resources to other organizations. Um, so the cloud environment for private cloud needs to be procured, set up, operated, um, and maintained by the organization itself. So the, the so the private cloud resources are typically shared within the organization. So public cloud is shared with multiple organizations, while uh, private cloud is typically shared within the organization. So unlike the the public cloud security and terms of use for a for a for a private cloud are defined by the organization since they are the only one who uses the resources that so the entire infrastructure is located within the organization perimeter and and then their security can be compliant with the organization's policies so the third one is hybrid cloud so <clears throat> hybrid cloud, um, their infrastructure includes in or uh, includes an owned uh, private cloud and a leased public cloud. So basically it's a combination of both. So hybrid clouds enable the idea of um, cloud bursting. So meaning uh, an organization uses its private cloud for most of its needs and dynamic dynamically prov provision resources 
in the public cloud when utilization exceeds the capacity of its private cloud. And then there are actually other types of uh, clouds continue to emerge. So for example, we have the communi community cloud. So this share infrastructure among different organizations that have common security or other concerns. And then another type is distribute, distributed cloud. So which provides cloud computing using a set of distributed machines located at a different geographical locations. <coughs> so now we have defined what is cloud and we're able to identify its uh, characteristics as well as the different deployment uh, cloud deployment models. So now let me introduce to you the three main cloud computing models. We have IaaS, PaaS, and SaaS. <coughs> so each representing a different part of cloud computing stacks, which will be discussed in the following slides. So first, we have um, IaaS, or Infrastructure as a Service. So IaaS uh, basically contains um, the basic building blocks for cloud environment and typically provide access to networking features, computers, and data storage, uh, data storage space. So um, infrastructure as a service basically provides um, organization or businesses with the highest level of flexibility and management control over their IT resources. And in most cases, um, it is somehow similar to their existing IT resources that many IT departments and developers are kind of familiar within um, familiar today. So um, this cloud service model actually offers a lot of flexibility to organizations because they just purchase computing resources on demand instead of buying their own hardware. So <clears throat> you can imagine, let's say you establish uh, a business wherein you build your own hardware, you have to maintain it. But with this platform um, or with this technology, you don't need to, to worry about building, setting up the, the hardware on your own. You can just purchase it on the internet via cloud, which is the infrastructure as a service. So this way, um, companies increase efficiency, scalability, redundancy, and security while keeping their keeping control of their infrastructure. And moreover, by, by outsourcing their infrastructure, they also delegate its setup, management, and maintenance. So in return, they can save a lot of money, time, and efforts. Next is the past or the <coughs> platform as a service. So it's a cloud-based platform for developing, running, managing applications. So earlier, it's the infrastructure. So now we go to the uh, platform. <coughs> so the, the cloud service provider basically hosts, manage, and maintains all, all the hardware and software uh, included in the platform. Because in infrastructure, they only focuses on the hardware for pass or for the platform as a service it um <coughs> manages hardware and softwares so um so yeah so included in the platform uh, would be their servers their operating systems storage and as well as related services for security operating system and software upgrades backups and actually even more there, there's a lot of of all components within it, within the platform as a service <clears throat> so pass actually remove the need for the organization or businesses to manage the underlying infrastructure usually the hardware and operating systems and allow them to focus on the deployment and management of their application so this help them to be more efficient as they don't need to worry about their resource procurement, capacity planning, um, maintaining the software, or even performing the, the patching of the, the hardware and uh, soft, um, hardware and then the operating system because those are responsibilities of the cloud service providers. 
So basically, um, the users can able to access PaaS through a GUI interface or a graphical user interface. So imagine that, that you don't need to go to the data center or to to open a firewall port for you to access it. So you just need to open up a browser, then access your application from there. And you can collaborate across all um, your organization. <coughs> so example of task, um, past solution includes actually AWS Elastic Beanstalk, Google App Engine, uh, Microsoft Windows Azure, and then Red Hat OpenShift on the IBM Cloud. And the third one is SaaS or Software as a Service. <coughs> so SaaS provides us with a complete, complete product that is run and managed by the cloud service provider. So um, actually, in most cases, people refers to SaaS as an application. So with, with SaaS offering, you do not have to, to think about how the service is being maintained or how the underlying infrastructure is being managed. You only need to think about how you, how you will use that particular piece of software. So a common example of SaaS um, would be web-based email where you can send and receive email without having to manage um, its features to, to the email product or maintaining the servers of, of the email gateway. So that particular task is responsibility of the cloud service provider. So all you just have to do is to, to use the, the application. So yeah, so that, that's the um, cloud, an introduction to the cloud. So uh, let's recall what we've discussed at the beginning, actually even with uh, what um, Lieutenant John have shared, right? More about uh, the security. So security is very rampant nowadays and there are lots, um, and it's now sophisticated, getting more sophisticated and more and more are being victimized about about cybersecurity or ransomware in, in to be specific. So, and now, um, in this day and age, um, COVID-19 pandemic really prompted a pressing need for the organization or businesses to give their employees the chance to work remotely. Actually, including me, I've been working remotely since February 2020. So, it's almost two years now I, I am working remotely. So this driving an increase, increasing number of businesses to utilize cloud technologies. Um, however, this also exposed them, including me, to cyber attacks on business infrastructure and the users, just like employee users. <coughs> so Integrating a, a cloud infrastructure with a company's um, IT infrastructure is always a collaborative effort between the IT staff and then the cloud service provider. Because of this pandemic, uh, the, the, the traditional cloud security approach have become obsolete and various new security problems have emerged, which IT and the product management must be aware of. So basically, cloud security um, consists of a set of policies, controls, procedures, and technologies that work together to protect uh, cloud-based systems, data, and infrastructure. These security measures are configured to protect cloud data, support regulatory compliance, and at the same time, they have to protect their customers' privacy as well as setting authentication rules for each and every individual users and devices. So from authenticating access up until filtering the traffic, cloud security can be configured to the exact needs of the business. And because of these rules, uh, can be configured and managed in one place. So administration overheads are reduced and IT teams are, are empowered to focus on other areas of the businesses. 
but remember the way cloud security is delivered or the way cloud security is delivered will always depend on the individual cloud provider or the cloud security solutions in place and then the implementation of cloud security processes should be a joint responsibility between the business owner and then the solutions provider. So here are some um, common cloud security challenges and risks. So first is the data breaches. So today, data breaches are the number one issue for businesses. Actually, according to um, IBM and Ponemon Institute, the average cost of a data breach jumped from three uh, 3.86 million US dollar to 4.24 million US dollar between 2020 and 2021. So this is the highest average cost that they've seen in the past 17 years. Um, data breaches in the cloud actually different from the on-premise attacks. So with cloud, malware is less important for the attackers. Instead, attackers take advantage of um, misconfigurations insufficient access, stolen credentials, and other vulnerabilities. <coughs> Next one is visibility. So to address various business and operational demands, 76% um, of the organization actually use two or more cloud providers. This will result in a lack of insights into the whole cloud environment since they have multiple providers and with that this result in decentralized controls and management which causes them a uh, blind spot so blind blind spots are the endpoints workloads and traffic that are not adequately monitored uh, <coughs> monitored by by the security operations team and frequently these security gaps can be exploited by the attackers Next would be the dynamic workload. So a dynamic workload is made up of um, all the processes and resources that are used to support an application. So in other words, um, this is an application composed of numerous workloads such as uh, virtual machines, containers, serverless functions, databases, etc. So the, the workload consists of the application, the data generated or entered into that application. <coughs> so um, failure to um, to effectively protect each those workload not only make the application and organization vulnerable to breaches, but also causes the application development to be delayed, uh, production and performance will suffer, and then the business the business speed will kind of slow. Um, next is misconfiguration. So moving quickly exposed application to misconfigurations. Um, this could be um, because of the, the, the pandemic. Most of the businesses tried to, um, what do you call this, makisabay um, to, to the latest trend with, for them to continue their, their businesses, which um, most of the common vulnerability in cloud environment is the misconfiguration because they, they wasn't able to properly configure their um their configuration to the cloud. So <clears throat> misconfiguration merely results in overly per permissive account privileges, insufficient logging, and other security gaps, which expose organizations or businesses to data breaches, um, cloud breaches, insider threats, and adversaries that exploit vulnerabilities to, to get access to their data and to their network. Next is the unsecured APIs. So an API, in essence, um, it enables the applications or components of applications to connect with one another through the internet or a private network. Um, in other words, APIs are used by organizations to link their services and transfer the data either internally or to or to their partners, suppliers, um, customers, and other 
third parties. <coughs> so, um, APIs that have been exposed, broken, or hacked are responsible for massive data breaches. And it will disclose financial uh, it will disclose financial, customer, and medical uh, sensitive information. And because of APIs, actually the, the the because APIs actually transform the specific types of data into the endpoint. So a change in policy or permission on that API will increase the risk of unwanted access to the data than the host is intended to. Um, the next is um, access. Sorry. <coughs> next is the access control and unauthorized access. So companies frequently provide employees more access and permission than are required to accomplish their job functions. Um, this actually practice um, increase, increases the risk of identity-based threats. Um, access policies uh, that have been incorrectly configured are common problems which go actually undetected by the security auditors. Um, furthermore, organizations that use uh, multi-cloud environments sometimes uh, rely on, on the default access controls of their cloud providers, which can be problematic in multi-cloud or hybrid cloud setup because insider threats can do significant damage due to their privileged access, knowledge of where to strike, and ability to cover their tracks. <coughs> Lastly would be the security compliance and auditing. So. Cloud compliance and governance are complex, and so are the industry, international, um, federal, state, and even the local regulations. Part of the issue is that the cloud compliance exists on numerous levels, none of which are being managed by the same parties. <laughs> so um, shadow IT or the usage of software devices or applications that are not explicitly approved makes the cloud compliance even more difficult. So to, to address these challenges that I have um, shared, organization needs a comprehensive uh, cybersecurity strategy designed around vulnerabil vulnerabilities specific to the cloud. That is why cloud security is important. So cloud security is uh, a paramount for businesses making the journey to the cloud. Security threats are always evolving and becoming more and more and more sophisticated. And at the same time, cloud computing is no less vulnerable than an on-premise infrastructure. So as a result, it is critical to engage with a cloud uh, provider that provides um, best security that has been tailored to your infrastructure. Uh, I've also listed down here some of the best practices um, in cloud security. <coughs> First is the centralized security. So cloud security is actually similar to on, on how cloud computing centralized their applications and data. So when dealing with shadow IT or um, BYOD or bring your own device, cloud-based business networks actually contains um, a numerous amount of devices and endpoint that might be challenging for them to manage. So to <coughs> centrally managing these entities will improve the traffic analysis and web filtering. And at the same time, it will streamline the network event monitoring and results in fewer software and policy upgrade. So with this one, um, we need, the organization needs to have visibility with all of their applications, uh, machines, softwares that are being utilized within the organization. Next is that cloud security helps us to, or helps the businesses to reduce costs. So one 
benefit of using cloud storage and security is that it eliminates the need to invest in specialized hardware since you don't have hardware at all. Um, the, the appliances are being managed by the cloud service provider. <clears throat> so this minimizes not only the capital expense, but also the administrative overhead. So imagine that instead of you having a dedicated resource or uh, employee to manage your um, infrastructure, you can delegate these people or these um, analysts to another um, work stream wherein he can be um, leveraged. <coughs> um, and at the same time, um, cloud security sometimes provides um, proactive security capabilities um, that provide actually protection 24 hours a day, seven days a week with little or no human intervention. So as long as you configure your uh, tools properly. The next one is it reduced administration. So as I've mentioned earlier, uh, as part of the, the uh, costing, right? when you choose a reliable cloud service provider or cloud security platform, you can actually say uh, goodbye to manual security configurations and practically uh, the, the continual security updates. Because when you purchase a hardware, you, just, you don't just not put it in there. You need to manage it um, every now and then. You need to ensure that uh, the OS is updated, security patch um, has, be, uh, has been installed. So these activities can actually consume a lot of uh, resources. But when you shift them to the cloud, all security administration happens in one location and it is being fully managed on your behalf. Lastly would be the reliability. <clears throat> so cloud computing um, services provide the highest level of dependability. Um, users can access their data and applications into the cloud uh, no matter where they are or what devices they are using, if the proper cloud security mechanisms are in place. So more and more organizations actually are realizing that many businesses benefits of moving their systems into the cloud. Um, and cloud computing actually allows organizations or businesses to operate at scales. It reduces the technology costs and use agile systems that um, that gives them the competitive edge. However, um, it is also essential that the organization have complete confidence in their cloud computing security. And since all of their data and applications are stored in there, so they need to ensure that it is being protected from data theft, um, data leakage, or even the corruption and deletion of their data. So always remember that all cloud models are still vulnerable to the threats. That is why um, majority of organizations are somehow hesitant to move their critical system. So they kind of choose the hybrid model wherein they can re still store the critical systems to their uh, premise. <clears throat> and at the same time, um, it is crucial that the, the proper security measures be in place regardless of whether you are operating in a native cloud or hybrid or on-premise environment. Cloud security will provide all of the capabilities of the traditional IT security. It will also allow businesses to take use of many benefits of cloud computing while being safe and ensuring that their data privacy and compliance requirements are satisfied. So here on the right hand side of the presentation, I've also listed down um, some of the best practices in cloud security. So first is the strategy and policy. So a comprehensive cloud security program should account for cloud security risk ownership and accountability, both internal or external. Um, gaps in protection or compliance and controls required to mature 
the security and achieve the desired end state. Then we also have then we also have the network segmentation. <coughs> so in a multi-tenant environment, consider the, the segmentation that exists between your resources and those of other customers, as well as between your own instance. When possible, use a zone method to isolate instance, your instances, containers, application, and then the entire system from one another. Another uh, best practice would be the IAM or the Identity Access Management and PAM or Privilege Access Management. So this ensures that only authorized users have access to the cloud environment. Um, and at the same time with your applications and the data by leveraging those uh, strong identity management and authentication methods, um, such as uh, 2FA, right? Because there are times that your password can be, um, if, if you did not set your password, um, not, not correctly, but strong enough to, to for them to, to guess, for, for the attackers to guess it, then they can uh, get into your account. So it is recommended to have uh, a 2FA, just like uh, an OTP or uh, your fingerprints for, for you to somehow ensure that no one will be able to, to, to bypass the authentication. <clears throat> and at the same time, we need to enforce the least privilege to limit the, the access and harden the cloud resources. So for example, um, only expose resources to the internet as needed. And then you need to deactivate unnecessary capabilities, features of your access. And at the same time, we must determine that privileges are role-based and that privilege access is audited and logged using a session monitoring. Next is discover and onboard cloud instance and assets. So once your cloud instance of um, services and assets are discovered, it group and group, bring them under um, your management. So basically managing th those instances, creating a cycling password, uh, setting a, a password policy configuration, and you need to you need to set uh the discovery and onboarding should be automated as much as possible to eliminate shadow IT. <coughs> Next is password control or for privilege and non-privileged password. So never authorize the usage of shared password because there are cases wherein um a powerful account is being used by multiple users and there are, there are times that, that they just list it down on a piece of paper and then pass it on to another users for them to use so it's really a no-no so passwords should be used in conjunction with other authentication techniques in critical locations and ensure that the best practices for password management are being followed so just like what i've mentioned earlier there should be a 2fa or at least um, a periodic um, password. Um, you need to, to enforce password change so uh, periodically. So the users will change their password and in a certain period of time. <clears throat> Next is vulnerability management. So you need to perform vulnerability scanning and security audits on a regular basis and then patch them um, and patch the, the known vulnerabilities. Then next is encryption. So encryption basically ensures your cloud, um, ensures that your cloud data is encrypted while it address uh, or even in, in transit. So it needs to be encrypted. Um, next is disaster recovery. So be aware of the data backup, retention, and recovery policies and processes of your cloud um, service provider. So you need to ensure that they meet your internal standards. At the same time, um, 
ensure that you have the break break glass strategies and solutions in place. Next is monitoring, alerting, and reporting. So continuous security and user activity monitoring should be implemented across all environments and instances. So it integrates the it it, it integrates and centralized data from your cloud provider, if available, uh, with data from your in-house and external vendor solutions to get a complete view of what is going on in your environment. So <clears throat> this is where the SOC comes in. Um, just like with other security um, disciplines, security operations are being transformed as well by, by evolving business models, attackers, and technology platforms. And the following trends are driving the change of the security operations. So one is the cloud platform coverage. So security operations must detect and respond to attacks across the enterprise state, including the cloud resources. Um, cloud resources are new and rapidly evolving platforms. So that is oftentimes unfamiliar to the SecOps professionals. And second is to shift to identify centric security. The traditional SecOps or um, SOC <coughs> actually relies heavily on network-based tools such as firewalls, um, IPS, IDS. But now we must integrate identity, endpoint application, and other tools and skills. Um, this integration is because attackers have already incorporated identity attacks like phishing, um, creden credential theft, uh, password spray, and other attack types in, into their arsenal that reliably evade network-based detections. Um, another um, thing is that assets of value, like bring your own devices, spend some or all of their life cycle outside your network perimeter that limits the utility of network detections. The third one is the IoT and OT coverage. <clears throat> so adversaries actively targeting IoT and OT devices as part of their attack um, attack chains. These targets might be ultimate. These targets might um, be the ultimate purpose of an attack or a means to access or traverse to your environment. And lastly is cloud processing of telemetry. So security operations, uh, security operations modernizations is required um, because of the massive increase in relevant telemetry that comes from the cloud. This is difficult or impossible to process with on-premise resources and classic techniques. So um, it, it drives the, the security operations to really embrace the cloud service that provide massive scales analytics. Um, in, at the same time, machine learning and even the behavior analytics. These technologies will help rapidly extract the value to meet the time sensitive um, for the security operations. So our, our key takeaway for this session actually is that SOC is not just a single asset. It is a collection of the right people, processes, and technologies that work together to address the organization needs. But one thing that I want to highlight with you is that people are, the, uh, are a SOC's most valuable assets. And they need to be knowledgeable and well-equipped to apply their expertise judgment and to have a creative thinking and with that um, i'd like to introduce some of the isaca certifications that can enable young professionals and students like you to start building your careers into cloud security so these certifications are adaptable and can be obtained in any order or combination based on the based on your goal so actually on the left side the one that's in violet these are um, ITCA fundamentals, while on the right, lower right-hand side are the CET. Um, so <clears throat> you may wonder 
how the CEP differs from ITCA credential. So basically, ITCA requires little to no knowledge of concepts or skills, and it covers fundamental knowledge of the topic areas, while the CEP is focusing on the emerging technologies within the IT environment. So basic understanding of IT knowledge and concept is really recommended. And then we also have some advanced certifications here. So we have the CSAC or the Certificate of Cloud Auditing Knowledge. And then we have um, C-Series here. So we have CISA, CISM, um, CDPSE, CRIST, and CSXP. So yeah, um, in order for you, if you are really interested to uh, join um, SOC, and SOC, uh, SOC and Cloud Security, I highly recommend to take these uh, fundamentals for you to at least start your journey into cybersecurity. So find us on social media. Go to ISACO website and connect with your peers on Engage. And join the conversation on social media. Just a moment. So we have here two questions for you, addressed for you, um, Mr. James. So first is... Uh, first questions, uh, first question from Glenn Gali. Paano makoconvince ang organization sa pag-establish ng SOC if needed na talaga? To, to prepare a report wherein these are the security alerts or events that we are seeing in our environment and then what are the implications of of those security events or security incidents if we will not be um, detecting it or mitigating it um, right away so yeah all right thank you so much for that uh, once again mr james for the wonderful answer and I think this is, we actually have a second question from them, Ronan Banate. Um, so question it, is, go ahead, Ms. First. Yes, uh, this is somehow related to the first question, sir. Mm -hmm. So acquiring of security tools and building SOC is very expensive indeed. So what are the things that needs to, to be considered to protect the organization without depending on SOC? Sorry, can you repeat the last uh, part of the question? Okay, sir. Uh, what are the things that needs to be considered to protect the organization without depending into uh, SOC? Mm, okay. So actually, that's true. Actually, the you know, technologies are, or tools are really expensive. But um, the, the important thing here is that we need to have a proper policy and procedure in place because number one um, <coughs> entry point of our attacker are its people, the employee of the organization. So if you get victimized by phishing, you'll be targeted already. The, the, the attackers can go inside to your network. So if, if the businesses, if the business or, or organization doesn't have that much enough fund to invest on their tools or technologies, they must enforce policies and procedures and awareness to their employees. So not just only limited to IT, but to the whole uh, organization itself. They need to conduct um, security awareness. They need to train their people about those and don'ts. All right. Thank you so much once again, Mr. James. All right. All right. And before we let you go, um, As a way of honoring you for uh, sharing your expertise with us, we would like to award this certificate. Right, certificate of Appreciation, and this certificate is awarded to Mr. Angelo James Valdovizo in recognition of your commitment of giving valuable contribution and insights to Hacking Canalang 2022 Cybersecurity Conference. Thank you so much. Stay safe. Thank you. Thanks as well. And magandang hapon. Thank you. Thank you.
to okay. continue to share our life to reach more people and take advantage of this free cybersecurity webinar. And reminder for everyone, our Catch the Flag or CTF is ongoing. So pay attention and stay focused on our presenters as we may flash the flag at any time. And we encourage everyone to participate in this activity. Of course, aside from the experience, winners may win up to 250,000 worth of, voucher, of, of vouchers, including LPI 30% voucher discounts, Compia Data Plus exam voucher, Tut Compia Security Plus exam voucher, and three mile two ultimate self-study combo worth 153,000 pesos. And once you see a flag flash on the screen, it's the indicator that we have already provided the com in the comment section our CTF challenge. Okay. So moving on to our next speaker, he is a long-time free and open source technology user and advocate. He has been able to help start and grow several companies in Brazil by combining free and agile thinking methods, mostly pertaining to educational institutions. With expertise in project management, solution selling, solution architecture, team leadership, and business development and LESS certified. Linux Professional Institute Community Engagement Director of Latin America. To discuss the topic security is essential, we are proud to have Mr. Cesar Broad. Hello, Mr. Cesar. How are you doing? Sir? Hello. Can you hear me well? Yes. Can you hear me well, sir? Good, excellent. Uh, I was very glad to, to be here a little bit earlier and see Angelo's presentation. I thought, uh, well, in terms of security, actually in terms of everything, but in terms of security, you are always learning. Uh, Jolly from LPI is also in here, and he knows that I was very concerned about the... the I'm not in my, in my office. Uh, my girlfriend is moving into another city, in a coastal site city in here, so I'm helping her move. And, you know, you think of internet today as something that you always, it will always be available to you. And when you are a security professional, you need to be concerned that you should not uh, ever have a single point of failure. And this is pretty much what I faced yesterday. <laughs> I try to, I, I, I'm, I'm really that type of uh, security guy that I'm really, really concerned about things going wrong. So uh, yesterday I thought, well, maybe if something doesn't work today, uh, I would at least have a video uh, recorded so you guys could use uh, in any case. Well, it ended up that I had problems with my internet. Due to the problems with my internet, I could not get the whole video uploaded to, to YouTube. So the setting that I have today in here, I have this computer that I'm talking to you in one network and another computer actually also connected to the event uh, in another network using my cell phone as a backup. So uh, when you are a security professional, you really should take care of that kind of stuff. Like you, no single point of failure. And well, starting with that, I will share my presentation with you. And let's see uh, if I can continue in this computer. And if not, I'll just move into another one. But let's hope that it's going to work in here. Right. So let's see, share my screen, start sharing. And while you're preparing, um, Mr. Brad, before we finally give you the floor, we would like to remind our audience to share a live stream using our official hashtags. And this time, please include Hashtag Linux Professional Institute. And this will be our official hashtag to, for this topic. Make sure to use all the hashtags mentioned when you share this event. You can just copy and paste those hashtags. And winners will be announced after Mr. Caesar's presentation. So, yes. I think Mr. Excellent. Caesar is so, ready for his presentation. So, sir, we will now give you the floor. Okay. Thank you very much. Can, uh, can I start now? Yes, uh, Mr. Brad, you can start now. Good, good. So I'm seeing my other computer in here that you, you guys are seeing my screen. So we are going to talk about the, the essentials of security and in, in Linux. And of course, as pretty much all of the security professionals today, um, 
I was going to say at some point in their lives, but I'm pretty sure that in pretty much all of the points in their lives, they will have to handle with uh, Linux system administration because Linux system administrations is uh, Linux systems are the basis of cloud and computing today. And as you saw in the previous presentation, pretty much everything is in the cloud. Uh, thank you very much of, uh, for all of you at, uh, at HKNL at this event for inviting uh, the Linux Professional Institute. We do know that all of you attending those sessions are security experts, and yet I, I, I think it's uh, always good to talk about the things that are um, important uh, in terms of the, the, the basic stuff, starting with the, the essentials. Because you know, uh, most of the time, the the obvious things they they need to be repeated. So, for most of you, I'm pretty sure that I'll be repeating a lot of stuff in here. So, let's go. Uh, this is my basic agenda in here. Uh, I try to. I, I have the agenda and I have the slides because I tend to talk too much. And of course, security is a very very big field. So. Um, Although I, I have scripted the presentation, I have the agenda, I will probably end up uh, ending up talking more things than I planned. But I'll try to, to be on time. Actually, I'll try to, to save a little bit of my time because I, I really want to, to, to listen to, to your questions. So without further ado, let's just move on. Uh, everything that I mentioned in here, every content that, that, that I will explore, it is in this site, learning.lpi.org. This is the place where we keep all of the information regarding our certifications. Uh, as I mentioned, our certifications, well, before that, uh, most of you, I'm pretty sure, have been hearing the term DevOps for a little bit more than 10 years now. It all started in, in Belgium with uh, Patrick, I can't remember his last name, but that's, that's, not, that's not really important. Uh, we try now to, to understand that the ICT professional is someone that understands about development and also understands about operations. And within operations, we include security. And uh, from some time now, people uh, have been preferred to use the term DevSecOps to really stress how security is important. And security is so important for us at LPI that we cover security in all of our exams, starting from the essentials exams. We have now the Linux essentials exams. We are launching web development essentials. And soon we will have also our own security essentials. Uh, this is uh, a security career path if you consider Linux uh, Professional Institute topics. And here I want to, to tell you something that is very, very important for us. A lot of people think of us as a certification body. And we are very proud and happy to, to hear people considering us a, a certification body. But the truth is that the mission of LPI uh, is not to certify people. The mission of LPI is actually make sure that the ecosystem of free knowledge, free technology is getting better and better through the people that are building this ecosystem. And uh, so we, we work uh, in several projects where we have people coming into the ICT market. Uh, we know we still need a lot of people in this market. So we work a lot with uh, inclusion, like bringing, uh, I'm very happy to see that we have a good amount of women participating in this event. So we work in the inclusion of women in the ICT market, but also in the uh, with minorities to get them in this market. Uh, myself, I'm working in a very big project with transgender people, and we were able, out of uh, almost 200 people, to have 87% of them employed, and we are actually following their career to see that, to, to make sure that the companies are not just uh, 
including people because they are required to. We want to make sure that those people are going to, to follow their career. Of course, how do we fulfill our mission? By selling certifications, and our certifications are considered in, term, in the open source software market the best ones. And we are doing uh, quite well. Uh, and uh, I could uh, spend a lot of time talking about certifications. I'm not going to do that. Uh, just to tell you that the security career path in the way that LPI views that it starts with Linux Essentials. Soon we will have Security Essentials. Then you have the, the LPIC 1, the Linux Administrator Certification. LPIC 2, the Linux, what we call the Linux Engineer, but it's actually the, the Linux Networked uh, Administrator, because you, you will be handling Linux in a networked system. And then we have a special uh, specialization certification on enterprise security. Uh, oh, okay. I got a message that my internet connection is not very good. Hopefully, it's it's going to to start until the end. Uh, okay, so let's move on. What we are going to do in here, we are going to dive into into the terminal. So we we are going to work with some of those files and commands and look into that. And uh, some people. Tell us, well, why do you guys that uh, work with Linux, why do you always talk about the terminal? And the truth is that, and I, I know that a lot of people here will, come, will, will agree with me, is that a lot of times the only access that you have to your system to, to make your system secure, to recover from uh, a disaster, is the terminal. And also, when you are running a server in the cloud, you don't want to, to overload this server with a lot of stuff. And graphics, they take a lot of processing power. So usually a machine that you have in the internet, it's, uh, you, you're not going to install a lot of things. So you will always be able to rely on the terminal. Uh, it's also important to tell you that uh, Linux is a system that is secure by nature. It derives from uh, an older system, which is Unix, which already had this structure in here. So you see this uh, red barrier close to the top where we have the user space, where regular users do their stuff. And regular users, even if they can mess up their user area, they are not going to mess up the whole system because um, those spaces, they are hello. really separated. I'm so sorry to interrupt, Mr. Uh, Brad. Yes? Yes. Our live on our Facebook and YouTube channel, uh, there has some, some technical difficulties, so just give us a moment. Sure, sure. All right, thank you. We're so I'll sorry wait to for interrupt. you to... No, that's okay. All right, thank you. We'll let you know if it's if it's up on our Facebook page and YouTube channel. Thank you so much. 